Continuamos con la serie. We continue with the series coming to know the heart of Saint Joseph. Today we'll speak about the duties and responsibilities, the paternal responsibilities of Saint Joseph. As we said in the previous reflection that Saint Joseph was called by God to serve directly the person and the mission of Jesus through the service of his paternity. And in this way, he would cooperate in the fullness of times and the great mystery of the redemption, and who is truly a minister of salvation. His paternity is expressed concretely in having made of his life, as St. John Paul II told us, a service, a sacrifice for the mystery of the incarnation and the redemptive mission that is united to it. And at the same time, he used his legal authority that the law granted the Holy Family to make a total gift of himself, of his life, of his work for the mother and the child. In having made his human vocation to domestic love, a superhuman oblation of himself, of his heart, and all of his capacities, and placing everything, all of his love, at the service of the Messiah who grew up in his home. In the Gospels, the paternal task of Joseph in regards to Jesus is developed. The fact that the salvation comes through the humanity of Jesus is realized in the gestures that form part daily of the of family life and that are inherent to the economy of the Incarnation and in view of the realization of the plan of salvation. What is this? to be inherent to the economy of Incarnation is the coming together of events, actions, gestures that are composed by God for the salvation of men. The evangelists are very attentive to show how in the life of Jesus nothing happens or is left to coincidence, but everything is developed according to a divinely pre-established plan. The formula often repeated. So it happened to fulfill the scriptures that we read in the Gospels, makes reference to the events written that are in total relation to a passage of the Old Testament, and that underscores the unity and the continuity of the divine project of salvation that reaches its full realization in Christ. The virginal paternity of St. Joseph, as we have said, isn't an abstract paternity, but total, that is expressed with the highest love for Jesus, and that had very present to him all that had been entrusted to him for him to realize his paternity, which he had to fulfill by fulfilling the paternal duties and responsibilities that had been entrusted to him. After being the witness of the virginal birth of Jesus and seeing the emptying of God-made man who comes to the extreme of being born in a stable, and then after contemplating the adoration of the, of the shepherds and the kings, then St. Joseph had to fulfill a duty, a paternal duty, the circumcision of the child, circumcision being the first duty of the father. St. Joseph, with this rite, exercises his right and his duty in respect to Jesus. The principle according to which all the rites of the Old Testament are a reality, are a shadow, better said, of the reality that would be totally fulfilled by the true Son of God. It explains why Jesus lives them, accepts them, and realizes these rites. As with other rites, the rite of circumcision, there is in Jesus a full realization. The relationship of God with Abraham, for whom was a, a sign, obtains in Jesus its full effect and its perfect realization. Jesus being the yes of all the ancient prophet promises. In the circumcision, Joseph had to impose a name on the baby. He had to give the baby his name. That name is the only one in which 
salvation is found. And to Joseph, the meaning of that name had been revealed at the moment of the annunciation while he was asleep, and you will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1.21 By imposing his name, Je- Joseph declares his legal paternity over Jesus, and by proclaiming the name, he proclaims also his self saving mission. He proclaims that Jesus is the Savior uh, from our sins. He is the Savior of all people. St. Joseph has full authority over Jesus, and by proclaiming his name, he is proclaiming, brothers and sisters, the name above all names. From the moment itself that he had given the name to the baby, the name of Jesus, that name which St. Paul says, that is the name that is above all names, the name before which every knee will bend on earth and in heaven and under the earth, that every tongue will confess that name that Jesus Christ is the Lord for the glory of God the Father. That same name by which the disciples would have to ask everything from the Father and only if we ask through the name of Christ would they be granted. That name that has all authority to heal, to deliver, to stop storms, to expel demons, to resurrect the dead, to raise paralytics, would be the name also which St. Peter and St. St. John would do their first miracle in the temple when they said, silver or gold I don't have, but what I have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. Brothers and sisters, that name, the name of Jesus, the name above all names, was legally given to the Son of God by His Father, St. Joseph. He was the Father of Jesus, the one who had the duty to provide for the ordered insertion of the Son of God into the world in respect to the dispositions, to divine disposition, meaning learning the law of God, but also he had to teach him human laws. Regarding this, let's remember the census. When the birth of Jesus was close, Jesus had to go to Bethlehem because by the order of the Emperor Caesar Augustus, all of the inhabitants of the country had to go to their city of origin to register for the census. What did St. Joseph do? He went out from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David. Luke chapter 2. But together with St. Joseph goes the Blessed Virgin Mary, his bride, who is pregnant and soon to give birth to the Son of God. Going to Bethlehem for the census, according to the dispositions commanded by the legitimate authority, Caesar, Joseph also exercises his legitimate authority over the child. He fulfilled his important task, means to officially inscribe the name, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. And where does he write it? In the register of the empire. That inscription manifests in an evident way the belonging of Jesus to the human race, man among men, citizen of this world, subject to the laws and civil institutions, but also, and above all, savior of this world. Jesus is in the world before the census would have taken place, and here we see a certain mystery. He is going to be inscribed, and he is inscribed by St. Joseph in the book of the world, when his mission would be to be able to inscribe our names in the book of eternal life, in his own heart. St. Joseph is the one who inscribes him legitimately in the human registry. And so now Jesus is subject to civil laws. We see that Jesus understood the importance of 
being a good citizen. When they want to tra trap him and they ask him about the taxes, what does Jesus respond? The Gospel tells us that Jesus saw the malice with which they wanted to trap him and, they, and he said to them, show me a coin. Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. And what did Jesus respond? He said, then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. How much St. Joseph must have taught Jesus about these two dimensions of human life. The subjection to civil laws and obedience par excellence to the divine laws. And when they find Jesus in the temple after he had been lost, what does Our Lady say to Jesus? Your Father and I have looked for you. How beautiful it is to see how Our Lady gives his place to St. Joseph. She herself calls him your father. It's not a conventional phrase. The words of the mother of Jesus indicate the whole reality of the, of the incarnation that belongs to the reality of the family of Nazareth. Joseph, from the beginning, accepting through the obedience of faith the mystery of his human paternity regarding Jesus. Following the light of the Holy Spirit that through the faith is given to man, he discovered more and more the ineffable gift of his paternity. His whole life, as much the private and the hidden life of Jesus, he was entrusted to be his guardian. What a mystery, brothers and sisters. Can we imagine St. Joseph holding the hand of Jesus, taking him to the synagogue to listen to the word being proclaimed and seeing the child Jesus listening to the voice of his heavenly father through the proclamation of the word through a man? What did St. Joseph feel knowing that the one who was beside him was the word made flesh? But in his humanity, he had to be educated in the law of God, and it was up to him as father to be the formator, the educator of his heart and his human intellect. Can we imagine the pilgrimages to the temple for the feast of Passover as Joseph and Our Lady and the child Jesus went in pilgrimage in the caravan, singing the Psalms and meditating on the passages of the sacred scriptures? What would he have felt? St. Joseph and Our Lady, when they separated before entering the temple and Jesus, perhaps proclaimed the psalm, I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Or perhaps he said and exclaimed to his heavenly Father, how good it is to be in the courts of your house. I want to enter into your dwelling with songs of praise. What would Jesus have said when he saw such a big temple that worship was given to his Father? When he was there present, the God who they so longed to see was among them as one of them. How many sentiments were there in the heart of St. Joseph when he sat in the evening to make memory together with Our Lady of all the things that the Lord had done for them and for their people, telling Jesus, yes, brothers and sisters, it's a mystery that transcends us, but for everything, for all of this, we always have to have very clear that it's a plan of love for the salvation of men. Jesus had to learn everything as a man, everything that God the Father had said and done for men, being himself the full realization of the word of the Father. Our Lady Mary of Nazareth, the mother of Jesus, taught Jesus to call Joseph your father and to live under his paternal authority. And the Blessed Virgin Mary called him your father. And how did Jesus call him? My Father, Jesus, the Son of God, would live beside St. Joseph under his paternal gaze. How many times he would call him Father in joyful moments with exclamations, Father, look what I've done. Or perhaps in difficult moments when he fell, it would be when he hit his finger with a hammer, how he said, Father. Brothers and sisters, how can we not think that the paternal love of St. Joseph could influence in the filial love of Jesus. 
or vice versa, how the filial love of Jesus could have influenced the paternal love of St. Joseph. How do we enter into the depth of this such a singular relationship? Only pure and sensitive souls can can look through the window of the family of Nazareth and see within that home that dynamic of love and communion that is so pure and profound and be able to hear Jesus. Recite Psalm 89. He shall cry to me, You are my Father. Thank you, St. Joseph, for living with total dedication all the dimensions of the spiritual and human paternity. Thank you for praying with Jesus and Our Lady. Thank you for sitting to read the scriptures with them. Thank you for teaching Jesus to be part of our history and all of our human realities. And you, Blessed Mother, thank you for being a woman of the Word, full of wisdom and a profound gaze to understand in detail who St. Joseph was and for you yourself to foster the union of Jesus with his virginal father for having taught Jesus to call St. Joseph, you are my father.